going to get started with S-Series combine class. Uh, today we're going to focus on back to the basics. Uh, we're going to look at optimizing. Optimization for achieving a higher harvest productivity while striving to increase you guys' bottom line in the field. So before we get going, uh, I'm Chris Knutson. I'm Josh Whitrock. Yes, Mark Holt. We're going to be presenting today. Um, and I, and uh, I just want to thank you guys for coming. Uh, thank you for your time, and especially thank you for your business. Uh, without you guys, uh, we wouldn't be Horizon Equipment, and we wouldn't be here today. So just really appreciate you guys coming out and uh, taking the time to come out and listen to us. So when you're harvesting, what's important to you when you're traveling through the field? <coughs> Bod, what's important to you? No stops. No stops? <coughs> Besides... <laughs> the grain monitor and the yield monitor when we're going through the field. Behind the header, header loss, are we checking that? We're looking at red, residue management as well. Look in the grain tank, the quality of our sample we have, whether or not we have any foreign material in there. Also looking behind the machine, see if we have any loss behind the machine, as well as what kind of residue management we're doing on the back side of the machine. And most of all, we want to be productive. We want to keep that machine going, but at the same time, we want to do a good job while we're doing it. We're going to begin at the feeder house today. I believe you're going to learn about heads and header optimization after we eat. So we're going to take off here at the feeder house. First thing we're going to look at, feeder drum height. Everybody's aware of this, right? How to adjust it, where to adjust it two handles, one on each side of the feeder house, raise it up for corn, lower it down for beans traditionally. Um, one thing to take note on the bean side of things, if you're running a head 30 foot or smaller, lower that feeder house down, the drum, but if you're running a head 30 foot or larger, you want to probably keep that feeder house drum up just for the amount of trash and the crop flow that's coming through that feeder house. Um, you can look at it and see how things are going if you're running a real short crop. You may need to lower the feeder house down, but we also want to check crop damage, crop flow as it's coming through there to make sure it's working as it should be and not damaging the crop whenever it's coming in, it's just bringing it in. Other thing to take note of, the sprockets. Uh, you got your high side and your low side. Your high side is your, your big sprocket, your low side is your small one. We'll run the small one on corn, we'll run the high side on beans. Um, some guys don't change it. <laughs> Some guys do uh, from the low side. Something you're just going to need, like I said, to take note of. If you're running a real fast ground speed in beans, you may need to switch to the high side to help keep the crop flow away from the head, keep the head from plugging, keep everything feeding into the feeder house nice. Okay? <coughs> Feed accelerator. Located up in the front of the rotor. Known as the flow meter, I guess, for the rotor. There's a high and a low side to that feed accelerator. The low side, obviously, the slower it's going to spin, the more it's going to put in each vein and stick into that rotor. On the high side, it's going to stick a little bit less than that in that each vein as it's putting into the rotor. What else is going to affect how much we're, we're shoving through this when we're going through the field? Yield of our crop and how fast we got that stick shelled forward, right? How much crop flow we're actually taking in and feeding into that. So even though there's only two settings on there, we may have it on the high or the low side, but if we're cruising through the field going fast, that's going to affect it as well. One thing to take note of. Okay? <coughs> so if you're going fast, you're not fast. Right? Well, you just need to take note, if you're going faster, yeah, we probably need to run that feed accelerator faster because we're going to be spinning that whole machine faster in order to keep it full and opening it up. Could be in corn, right? Corn, could be beans depending on what the crop is and the different situations. I thought you run it fast on beans. Yes, you do run it fast on beans. <coughs> yep, helps for bunching in front of the rotor. Right. Run it slow on corn. Is it hot out here or is it just me? <laughs> Jesus, I am sweating. <laughs> Stuck off. <laughs> Not quite. Yeah, no more for today, please. <laughs> wait wait till these guys is turn. <laughs> Tri-stream feed and transition. Okay, on our S-series machines, 
We did change the rotor a little bit, going away from the bull rotor on the 70 series and the 60 series, and we, we smoothed out a couple of the transitions to help for crop flow as that crop was coming up and through that rotor. Okay, so to break it down a little bit more, we'll start in the front of the machine. So as we're bringing our crop in, guys, we're going from a longitudinal flow to a radial flow, right? We're turning it. Okay, so it's really important that as we're going through the field, we need to take note of how fast our rotor is spinning, because that's going to determine how much crop we're sticking in between each vein, and then also how fast we're going, right? So speed and RPMs are going to play a big role whenever the crop's first entering into that rotor. 12 revolutions of success or failure, depending on how we have things set up. Okay, so by the time that crop enters the rotor, we should spin that rotor 12 times, and we should be able to have the crop threshed and separated before it gets to the back of that rotor as we're going through the field. And how exactly are we going to achieve that? Okay, so in between the two lines on the screen, those are the threshing elements. That's the threshing portion of the rotor. Okay, so as the crop comes in, we're going to look to get it threshed um, on that short portion of the rotor there. How else are we going to do that? What else are we going to use? We're going to use the concaves, correct? Okay. And in, in, this, in this period of time, we're looking to get 100% of the threshing done and 70% of the separation. You can also move those concaves in and out to help us achieve this, right? That is one thing that we can control from the cab and it's up to the operator to determine where those spacing needs to be. And Dennis is going to talk a little bit more about that here a little bit later, so I won't go too far into depth on that. Um, what is that last aspect of getting the crop threshed as we're coming through the rotor? What else makes up what, what we're doing? Speed, RPMs, yep. So as we're going through the field, RPMs are also going to play a, a part in if we're getting that crop threshed, how fast we're going, how fast we need to spin everything, or how slow we're going, maybe we need to slow everything up and tighten things down, depending on crop flow as well. Separation, the back side of the rotor. As you can see, everything expands and opens up in the back. We're looking to take that mog that's coming through the rotor, and it's looking to expand out, and the grain's going to drop down. And we're going to look to get the last 30% of our separation done. So up here in the threshing element, we're looking to complete 70% of that separation. On the back half of it, we're looking to complete the last 30 Raise all the mog up, send the mog to the back, drop the rest of the grain down. If we don't get that done, we don't get everything separated on the back side, we got kind of one last chance to grab that grain and save it before it goes out the back of the combine, right? So there's the discharge meter grade on the back of the combine. Crop can come down in. And you can either kind of go two directions at this point. You can either go forward, as the arrow shows, come up on the forward shaker pan and come back on our chaffer, or it can obviously go out the back. We want to make sure it comes forward so we don't lose that grain as it's going towards the back. <laughs> Separator loss. If I don't have things adjusted properly, how do I know this, and where do I see separator loss? Does everybody know where that sensor is on the back of the combine, on the back of the rotor? Yep, right back here on the back side. A little bit different view, a little bit closer view. So if the grain is getting to the back of the rotor and spinning around and coming out, it's going to be impacting that plate as we're going through the field. Everybody knows where we see it on the monitor, right? Everybody knows what that little thing is down on the bottom of the screen that the bars move when we're going through the field. Which one's rotor loss? Anybody tell me? Kind of the one in the center there? Yep, so as we're coming through the field, we have our grain loss monitor calibrated. 
should be able to see our rotor loss with these bars that are going up and down on that monitor. And Dennis is going to finish talking about the rest of those bars and what they mean and how they all work um, on the grain loss monitor. Now, in order to make it all work, guys, it has to be calibrated. And as I said earlier, he's going to cover that in the rest of the presentation here. Okay hey guys, we're going to first we're going to start out with compression clearance. A couple of different sy symptoms you may see. We're too far closed, too far open. We got our clothes down too tight, we're going to see damage. It's going to take more power. We're going to be grinding everything up. And if we're too far open, we're going to have unthreshed. We're not going to get everything knocked off the cob. We're going to have beans in the pod yet. We're if we go back to being too close, we're going to be overloading the cleaning system. We're going to grind up all that mog. We're going to have a lot of fines. And the cleaning system is really going to have to work. If we're too far open, we're going to suck that crop. is going to stall in there. It's going to cause a mat. And we're going to see some rotor loss on there. And one tip you guys could use when setting the concave is take your size of the cob and slide a wrench over that cob in whatever size, if it's 17, 18, whatever it is, you can set your concave to that and that's a good starting point. But take note, your concave needs to be calibrated properly before that's work. Rotor RPM, as you can see, if we're too fast, we're going to have some damage again. Where if we're too slow, we're going to be back to having unthreshed grain. If we are spinning it too fast, we're going to have heavy mog. Clean system is going to be overloaded again. We're going to have some high tailings. Where if we're too slow, the separator is going to have low force. We're not going to be knocking everything off, and we're going to see some rotor loss. Clean system is going to be overloaded again due to the fallout of the mog. We're going to have high tailings, poor material in the sample and we're going to be seeing chapter loss too. So, I want you guys to take note that when we're setting both speed and clearance of the rotor, we want to find that sweet spot. You know, we want to keep the rotor full because that's when it gets maximum productivity and when that machine is full. So, if the crop is thin, we're not going very fast, we want to tighten everything up. But if we're getting good crop and we want we're doing good ground speed and we might need to open everything up to let everything do its job. Now we're going to step into the cleaning system, five steps to get to the grain tank. We're going to start out with the shoe augers. You guys know the shoe augers, they're directly below concaves there. And one other thing you guys take note of, you get in some real hilly conditions, this uh, partition there you can slide up so you get even distribution of your grain on those shoe augers and onto the cleaning system. You guys may think, well, what's the shoe augers got to do with separation? Well, you guys know the mog's lighter than grain, so as those augers turn, the grain's going to settle to the bottom, and we're going to start the separation right there. Next to the fixed non adjustable portion of it is the front chaffer. This carries the mog an extra 14 inches back to the chaffer and this is also where the majority of the clean grain gets down to the chaffer as well. And for you guys running a, 6 a 680 or 690, you're going to have this front chaffer extension in there to give you a little extra capacity. Next one is these fingers that are right behind the front chaffer. Those those are in there for a reason. We don't want to, you know, take side cutters and cut every one out or every other one out because that's just going to let that mog fall onto the chaffer sooner, and we don't want to have an overload on the cleaning system. You can see the first three steps. The first one's the shoe augers, the front chaffer, the second, and the third is the, those fingers. Now on to the adjustable portion of the cleaning system, chaffer and the shoe. You guys may know from running these machines, if you ran one last year, the chaffer is 30% larger than the 70 series machine. And if you guys running a 2013 model machine, 
this rear colored per portion of the chaffer is now manually adjusted. We have a dual adjust chaffer in there. We're, they're telling us that we want to set that for flat conditions, that rear portion needs to be set at 5, and for hilly conditions, set at 10 millimeter. That's the fourth step. The fifth, final step here is the shoe, and that's 20% larger. This is our final spot where the clean grain needs to fall down through to get to the clean through the grain tank. Now, just to clarify with you guys, when we we're talking about chaffer, you guys may think of it as the upper sieve. But this is the, the chaffer is what you're seeing here, and the shoe or the lower sieve is directly beneath that. Three paths. The grain can take, we're either going to go to the tank with it, it's either going to go to the return, or it's going to be a loss. For it to get to the tank, it cannot go beyond that green line. It needs to fall through that upper chaffer, lower sieve, and slide down into the clean grain auger and up into the tank. Where if we're going to get a return, it may, could fall through the the chaffer, but it's too big to fall through the sieve. It's going to go over the lower sieve, down into the lower tailings auger, and back to the separator if you're running class 5, 6, or 7 machine. The bigger machines, class 8 and 9, you have an active tailings processor, and that is where the returns are going to go to. Where if it goes past the red line here now, it's going to be a loss. It's going to the ground, we want to make an adjustment. So we're, we aren't seeing too many losses. A few tips for you guys to do for checking things. Visually check the sieves in comparison with the display. If your monitor says it's set at 10, you can put a 10 millimeter bolt in there in those louvers and if the bolt's loose in there we need to do a calibration. But we, before you do the calibration you want to make sure you got all the debris cobs and stuff out of the chaffer because in those calibration those louvers go full open, full closed and if there's a cob or stick or anything stuck in there it won't be able to close all the way and your calibration is not going to be right. Foreign material issues, we want to try to correct that before it gets to the cleaning system versus adjusting the cleaning system. The cleaning system is designed to run wide. You know, we start closing that cleaning system down it's going to close down airflow, and we're going to have fallouts, and we're going to see losses. We're going to have high tailings. We're going to have foreign material. We want to utilize tailings as a safety in those smaller machines. Use it as a safety in overflow conditions. But here, if you take note, for you guys running the bigger machines, you're going to have consistent tailings just for poor productivity. And here is that active tailings processor on those bigger machines. As you can see, it has its own rotor up here. And there's two different settings on that rotor. There's a small grain and a corn setting. But for this area, if you're just running corn and soybeans, we want to leave it in the corn position. Where, how's that? After it runs through the tail, active tailings processor, it's good. There's an auger that's going to bring it out and drop it underneath, directly underneath the rotor. It's going to drop onto that return pan and go to the front of the cleaning system where hopefully we can get it to the tank. And you guys, you know where we see how much is going through our return system. Which, which bar on this one? All the way to the right there. And for you guys running those bigger machines you will see some tail some bars on that just because we're running to get that productivity but for those guys running the smaller machines the class 7 and 6 and 5 you won't want to see a whole lot of bars on there. Chaffer loss. Chris talked about rotor loss earlier. We can also see chaffer loss. And on each side right and left there's a sensor that looks like that and the grain's got to fall through that hole. There's some little fingers there to keep uh, extra debris from falling down in there because we just want the grain to fall through there and contact that pad. 
after it contacts that pad, where are we going to see where's chapter loss? There isn't too many options left there. That's right, all the way to the left there. And that's where we'll see the bars come up. Now, all you guys have this combine adjustment guide. It's with your operator's manual. There's a lot of good information in this slide card. We have, there's four steps in there, four steps to success. For one of them is calibration of the grain loss monitor. But before we do calibrate that, note that we need to have the machine set right. We're at the right speed we want to go to. You know, the crop flow, if we're happy with what we're getting done. First step there is to set the machine to desired crop, whether you use the touch set on the machine or you use that slide cart. It has all machine settings on there. Next step, we're going to check for losses behind the combine. And here in the next slide, I think it is, we're, we'll have an example of how we want you guys to check for losses behind the machine. Third step is we need to check the tailings. We want to make sure that there isn't a whole lot of loose grain in there because if there's loose grain, we're running a risk of damaging that clean grain running it through the separator or active tailing processor. We want to get that to the tank the first time. And fourth step is to check the tank for a clean sample or make, if we got foreign material, we know we need to make adjustments to get that corrected. And finally, when we get all that set right, is the final step is calibration of the grain loss monitor. And to calibrate it, to get to this page, you got to hit the H tab, and then when you get to your desired speed, you're happy with your ground speed, the crop coming in, we need to hit the calibration button there, the highlighted blue, and then our grain loss monitor will be calibrated. And after we hit that button, this is what our grain loss monitor should look like. That center bar there is our productivity bar. And we want to keep that in between those two arrows. Now you guys may say, well, there's there's bars showing on the rotor and chaffer loss. That's going to be normal. That lets you know it's working properly. Where if we're, when that productivity bar now, if it gets above that, mark there we need to slow down or make an adjustment whereas if it gets below that mark we need to speed up or make the proper adjustment here we're talking about the separator and chapter loss how we want you guys to check losses behind the machine in this slide card again it will give you losses for how big a head you're running if you're running the corn head or if you're running the beans we're running this example here, we're running a soybeans with a 35 foot head. 26 seeds per square foot equals a bushel loss. Note, we need to have the chopper raised up and in neutral because we just want to look, if we run everything through the chopper, all those loose grain is going to go the whole width of however far that chopper can spread it. But we want to get the most accurate reading, so we want to go directly behind the machine and we want to do full width of the machine, or the, the machine discharge area right there. Another example we have here is 2012, 180 bushel corn, 16% moisture. This example we actually ran into, we had mog in the tank, high tailings, chaffer loss above 4.3 mile an hour. The operator has slowed the rotor, open the concave and close the sieves, but still not, not improve the sample. And you can see what our machine settings are at. We got rotor at 250, concave is 38, fan speed's 1,000, the chaffer and the shoes at 17 and 11. <coughs> Here's what our sample looks like. We got ground up cobs. We got some sticks in there. What's your first thought of what we should do? It up. First, what we actually did, we closed the deck plate and slowed the header down. He had the deck plates, he didn't want to have header loss, so he had the deck plates really squeezed down. And he had the header speed all the way up because he wanted to 
top all those stocks up real good. So after we did that, that's what it looked like. We got rid of the sticks, we still have the ground up cobs. So what's your first thought? We need to open the concave or slow the rotor down. Well, this guy here got it right. We need to close it down and speed the rotor up. We're getting bunching of the crop and the separator and we're getting crop cob destruction. We're getting poor engagement in there. And that, like Chris said earlier, we want to get 100% of that threshing done in those concaves and 70% of the separation. So he was creating a mat in there and he was getting poor crop engagement. Next, I think Josh is going to talk a little bit. Yeah, I'm going to talk a little about residue management now. What's actually coming out of the back of the machine and laying on the ground when you get done. Um, first, I'm going to talk about on these S3 machines, it's new, the new power tailboard. You have two orbital motors on the back that are each adjustable on each side. And these are adjustable by, on your right hand armrest, if you push this top button here, it's going to bring up that page. If you push the button once, you're going to adjust both of those motors together. Adjust the speeds together and they'll stay the same. If you push it twice, it's going to adjust your left hand motor. And if you push it three times, it's going to adjust your right hand motor. And they vary because if you're farming going east and west and you got a high north wind, you're going to spread more on the south hand side. So, if you bump the left one up a little bit, it's going to even everything out. When you get to the end of the field and you turn around and start coming back the other way, push that second button there, that's going to flip-flop your motor speeds. So you stay the same going back the other way. Keep everything spread the same and even. This is also new. This is going to be right in front of your chopper. In the past, rotor machines have been known to overload the right-hand side of the machine just because of spinning of the rotor. And this is going to help you feed the chopper evenly. So you don't get everything on one side where it more on one side. This is adjusted on the right hand side of the machine. It's just a threaded rod in there. Put extension in there and you can spin it. Move them either way, whichever way you need to go. So now, your old machine don't have it. Yeah, it has it. All the S series have it. And now the, on the chopper that's new is you no longer have to move a lever, move a belt, and change your chopper speeds from going high to low. It's just a three position pull arm, neutral and center, in for high, out for low. And you no longer have to raise the chopper to do that either. Just open your shield, either way. Now, a cob deflector. This is also on the right hand side of the machine, you already adjust it. This is inside, right in front of your chopper. For right in front of the chopper. If you're running corn, you want to make sure you have that flip down so you don't get kicked back in stocks. It'll ruin the chaffer in a hurry. It'll just destroy them. Then you want to keep that flipped up for beans. Make sure everything keeps falling through. Now your knife bank. This is also going to help a lot with how everything lays behind the combine, how much you get everything chopped up. You really just want to pay attention on how far you have it set in. There's a lot of common preference between how much you want to use it. Um, but the more you, farther you put it in, people say it's going to take more power, but it does a lot better job outside. It's just going to chop that stuff up a lot finer and lay it out a lot nicer. Last here, just want you guys to be safe this fall. When people get in a hurry, stuff happens, but pay attention, you can really be a lot safer. Um, as far as like a camera system there. We do have cameras on sale in the tent today. <coughs> and also shaft build up. And all the S series combines, it looks a lot like your slide guide. There is a laminated sheet of paper that shows chaff build up on the machines where it likes to sit and you can clean it off. You stop for lunch, blow it off, clean it off. It'll help a lot. Just don't get that stuff filled up on there. Cause problems. We also have leaf blowers too on sale. Make it a little faster. Got the great car operator job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Last but not least, we really want to thank you guys for coming. I mean, it takes a lot out of your day to come down here and 
hang out with us. And I mean, I really wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you guys and your business. And I just really do thank you a lot for that. I come right from the Hope you have a good harvest.